Nina, hello. Here we are again. How are you? Hi, doing? Steve. <laughs> it's really great to see you. I'm fine. Thank you. But it's been five months. It's hard to believe, isn't it? All that time. A whole Scottish winter between us. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But the good news is we have your new book here in a finished copy from those lovely people at River Run. And I must thank people at River Run for sending me not only a proof, um, but then a finished copy, which is extremely handsome, as you see. And let's have a look. We've got a lovely royal format hardcover there. I get lots of bits of paper inside because I'm special, you see, guys. But you can buy it in the shops before too long. And um, publication date is the 11th. Is that That's right? That's right. Yeah. 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 So you're probably going to be seeing this um, out of books our audience um, a few days beforehand. So so there we go. But so this is a new format. This is a review interview um, because I thought, well, I could talk about the book. But as Nina and I are chums, I thought we should may as well get her to talk about it with you. So so we will do that today. So um, there's a heck of a lot in the book. Um, which is something that mm -hmm. I'm used to with you because you really sort of bring all sorts of things into your work and and you never know which way things go, go which I love. And so I thought really we should start by, by summing up in terms of review. Could you outline um, the plot to a certain degree for us? Describe conquest for us in outline and the basic of where the story begins, as it were. Absolutely, sure. Um, it begins with... A young man, uh, well, young, young-ish man, yeah. called Frank. Um, he is a com freelance computer code writer. He's also passionate about the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. And also, he has what we'd call alternative beliefs, an alternative belief system. He believes that our planet is under threat from alien entities and that he has a special role to play in this secret invasion. Mm. We begin with, with Frank um, and he has recently made contact with others who ostensibly share his beliefs um, and has gone to meet certain of these people in Paris, where he's never been before. He's never travelled abroad before. He he has a kind of social anxiety, but he so wants to make this connection. He has gone to meet them. Unfortunately, Frank does not return when he says he's going to return, and he kind of drops off the map. Nobody that cares about Frank is able to contact him. They don't know where he is. The police aren't interested because Frank is an adult and they basically tell his relatives and loved ones it's totally Frank's business where he goes. We're, he's, we're not counting him, his, him as a missing person because you, your, the relatives, can't prove that there's been any sort of foul play or that he is in danger. So desperate for answers, um, Frank's girlfriend, Rachel, turns to Robin, who is a one-time police officer, now working as a private investigator. And Rachel is desperate for answers about Frank. Robin is doubtful in the sense that the police were doubtful. How do you know that Frank hasn't just decided to go off and start a new life? How do you know that he's in danger? Hmm. But she agrees to take on the case, not least because she too is a passionate admirer of the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. So right from the first, there is this strange link between Frank, between Robin, and increasingly between Rachel and Robin. And Conquest is the story of what happens next. Right. So there you go. So I, I couldn't have put it any better than that, because, of course, 
um you know it's interesting you you read you read a book and and you've summed up the beginnings of the plot there very well because if you don't want to go any further because there's a lot more to it but without giving the game away um let's discuss the genre status or not of conquest <laughs> without being too explicit about what it is and what it isn't and um, you know, we we talked when we did talk last time in December, and we talked about the influence of crime fiction on your work in some of your more recent sort of um, works, the last few novels. And this was present again, but also we have a science fiction element or presence or overshadowing to to a degree. And there's a fascinating part of the book, um, and I'm not giving the game away here because this I think is mentioned in in the blurb where there's an actual science fiction story which is part of the alternative belief system which which Frank discovers and gets involved with um but really conquest is something more than a crime and or science fiction story isn't it it's there is there is something more going on here in terms of breaking down the barriers between genres and using genre to say things um, about narrative and perception in a bigger sense. So, you know, this is something where <clears throat> I'm not going to say to you, is this science fiction, is this crime, or is it? But there is something else there. And, you know, how much, how much of that was a part of driving your writing with this to sort of do something which, which incorporated different genres um but still try to say something else it was it was a, a key element on i guess you could argue in a way that conquest is the sort of partner novel to the good neighbors in that the good neighbors played with ideas of fantasy within the context of a mystery narrative mm. and conquest is sort of doing the same for science fiction. In, in that way, I wanted Conquest, like The Good Neighbours, to be able to be read by somebody interested in crime narratives and be, for, for them to feel satisfied in it as a crime narrative. In other words, you present that reader with a mystery which the novel examines and, to an extent, solves so that it works as crime fiction. But as you said, I wanted to do more. Uh, I wanted to play with science fiction conceits in the same way that I played with, fa in The Good Neighbours, I'm playing with the fantastical idea of a fey folk, a, a, another, um, another race that's inhabiting our space simultaneously with human beings as per my myriad folklore retellings of that kind of story. And in Conquest, I wanted to play with the ideas of, um, yeah, alternate, alternative belief systems, mm -hmm. conspiracy theories, the idea of alien abduction, alien presence, mm. um, all of these things within the framework of a mystery narrative. I also think in Conquest, I hope I've pushed things even a little bit further in terms of narrative, in terms of bringing in almost, you, you've talked about the embedded text, the story, mm. the tower, also bringing in almost non-fiction elements and yes. merging those with you know sort of sewing those into the narrative and into frank's belief system yes. and yes. that's there to be found by readers you don't need to know all the as it were real world elements that are in play mm. um i've already heard from some advanced readers that they were looking things up and, you know, sort of some of were surprised to discover um, yeah. that some of it is actually actually real. Real. Yeah. real. Yeah. 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 But I, I th this is something I, as you know, you've been a long term reader of my yeah. fiction and uh, I, I, re I really enjoy doing that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, one, the book's the as much thing, about narrative. The one thing I found interesting, and because it's something I know about, was um, you um, referred to the filmmaker Shane Carruth, 
yes. uh, and who made, for me, what is the keynote science fiction film of the 21st century, Primer, which is Primer. a film. And I, yeah. I think all of us who are, you know, deeply embedded in, in our sort of sophisticated SF know Primer. And guys out there watching, if you've not seen Primer, do check it out. It really is quite something. And then, of course, he made... Um, a more inaccessible film, um, Upstream Colour, which which I admit I'm still struggling with. And I normally love that sort of thing. And of course, there's been um, speculation online about uh, Mr. Carr's private life, which we, which we won't go into. And also, um, there's an aside, he appeared. Have you seen he appeared in that film, The Dead Center? Didn't he? have you seen that? I haven't, but I know yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 he's an actor, and it's it's um it's it's a very good horror film. It's quite something to check it yeah. out. And yeah, 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 definitely. But yeah, so that that's just one thing that comes up, and I think um a, a book which um Conquest reminded me of, even though it's quite different, um, but it reminded me in terms of his ambition and this idea to look at a genre analysis and go further is somebody i don't know if you've ever met him or if you've ever read his work but um have you ever read house of rumor by jake arnett you've read that? i ha it's it's interesting because somebody else mentioned that book to me and yeah. i know jake's crime narratives but i have not read house of yeah. rumor so that seems to be you know some something that i will definitely visit yeah. at some point yeah. So it sounds really interesting. Yeah, you you'd um, love it. It's it's one of yeah. my favorite novels this century, and it's quite different to Conquest. But there's there's certainly, and it's very different in tone, and your styles are different. But Jake's a lovely guy, and um, it's it's interesting because it's a kind of undefinable thing, and and I think you'd really like. It. I think you'd love it. And I should say he he comes theoretically from a crime background, but of yeah. course the books have never been marketed as crime novels, and yet the early ones, the famous ones, the Long Firm, yeah, yeah, the Long Firm particularly, which is yeah. brilliant. Um, you know really really very much is and um, also we'll come back to music but as as I'm sort of waxing lyrical on this now um, another book by Jake um, which is called Johnny Come Home you as a music fan would find that fascinating as well that's a great book the only trouble Jake has at the moment is his books have the most terrible covers I don't know what Hodge and Stump think they're doing you know they don't they, the, the original covers are all great but they don't come up to the to the booty um, of what River have done this. I must say I do think they've done a really beautiful job it's, it's so, stunning isn't it it's I was so, so, so thrilled when I first yeah. saw that it's, I mean your yeah. books have got a history of good covers but this one is really yeah. really fantastic isn't it it's so imaginative and, yeah. and appropriate. It's so, so perfect for the book. Yeah. It works so well, doesn't it? But yeah, I, think, yeah. I think for me, I found that um, to sort of go into my little review bit now I'm talking to you is I felt that I felt the conquest is for me, probably your most accessible and commercial book yet, despite this complexity, because you do such, you, you know, it's, there's so much clarity in it. You, 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 you've sort of really sort of made it for me it seems like possibly the best entry point into your work for somebody who's new to your work with a possible exception of the rift which is a favorite of mine as well and that does some similar thematic things um to conquest and it seemed to me that this time after the relatively ornate prose which comes up in things like the doll maker and the good neighbors which is appropriate to the subject matter this seemed a little bit more stripped down stylistically and was was that a conscious thing was it a function of the needs of the plot or am i misreading? yes no i mean it what i mean i'm i'm delighted i'm delighted to hear you say that you found it accessible i really am because it took uh i mean like all all my novels to an extent have been a process of stripping down i am a writer that writes a, quite a long draft and then it's chop 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 it's sort of like cutting out extraneous material is a big part of my drafting process is sort of almost the books are too 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 confined a space for the ideas I want to get in and it's a matter of really streamlining that and it's an important part of my process but in conquest yes I wanted to bring I wanted to bring some of the elements of what I really admire in really good true crime narratives, which is an attention to the facts, an examination of the facts in quite forensic detail. And again, as 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 with The Good Neighbours, I wanted there to be a stylistic division between what we get when we open with Frank and we're in Frank's head. And that is probably the most, if you use the word ornate, that's probably the most ornate part of this narrative 
Frank's, it, it, the inner coils of Frank's thinking. Mm. But then when we get to Robin, she's an investigator. Um, I want that. that comes to the fore, yeah. Yeah, and I want that sense of precision, that sense of what actually happened, and let's draw what we can from that. So, yes, I, I, I was definitely drawing on that style of narrative, and it's a style I love to read. I like to examine the minute de detail in true crime narratives. It's very attractive to me, and I wanted to bring some of that to Conquest. I'm really glad that you felt that came across. Yeah, yeah I, I think it did. And I think, for me, the beauty of Conquest in terms of accessibility, um, it's accessible without, you know, fudging anything at all. The meat is there. And the, the beauty of it for me in terms of, I mentioned the genre status, is that it can be read on three levels in that respect. It can be read as a crime story. It can be read as an SF story. It can also be read as purely a mainstream novel as well. And I think that's the beauty of it. I think it is something where we, you know, it's an interesting thing. I have an ongoing dialogue with a friend of mine at work and, and he says, you know, genre needs to be broken down and what have you. And I think, I think anybody who like you and me in our background reading, coming from um, reading genre SF and being obsessed with new wave SF and wanting to sort of see see writers being able to, instead of becoming a genre writer uh, or a mainstream literary writer, whatever you want to call it, we want to see that thing resume where people like um, Wells or any of the great sort of 19th century novelists at time would write a story that we would now call a genre story. It was something, it was just part of the armory that somebody was a writer first. And they only became genre writers when magazines and what have you with specific marketing things constricted them. But at the same time, theories about genre come up, which, you know, I'm very big on. And those sort of constricting theories sometimes allow for certain levels of creativity. But I mean, the beauty of Congress is I think I would like to think that anybody um, could could read it. And the one dilemma I have as a bookseller with Conquest is, and, and you know, this is where I, I think I have to be creative about it, is that I'm trying to decide where to put it. Because, <laughs> um, you know, you have an established fan base who, um, especially where I work, who, who know your work and they, they will come in, they will come in looking for it. And they will look um, where most of your books are kept with the SF section. Um, at the same time, I think it would be a good challenge to read for crime re for crime readers who want to sort of go beyond their current sort of wave of cosy crime that we're seeing in the UK and the more edgy crime readers, I want to see them. And at the same time, I want people who just read fiction per se to pick it up. So it's going to be a challenge, um, but I shall see, I'll see what I can do anyway. But that's 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 the great thing about it. This, this will work for so many people on so many levels. And it was the wonderful thing you managed where, as I say, the complexity is there, but at the same time, it's extremely readable. And I, I felt that way. It was it was your most accessible book. And, and I think it's going to be your most successful. And I'm really looking forward to selling it. So I, so hope, I, hope, it's, so, I hope it speaks to contemporary concerns as well. I think and it does, like yeah. about that because you, we have got the I mean, the, the, it's it's. Um, one of the interesting things about it was I it, it was it changed it it's a novel that changed radically mm. because of COVID and the book I was the book I was working on when mm. the lockdowns happened kind of got kind of got sidelined and then completely repurposed mm. and I wrote the the embedded text the tower yeah. I wrote that it, literally when the first lockdown was happening and it contains, I think, a lot of the anxiety of that time. Mm. And that absolutely shaped the book that Conquest became. And so this the idea of, you know, conspiracy theories taking hold and conspiracy theories kind of affecting the minds and futures of vulnerable individuals and the way the way those those kind of spirals of thought and paranoia can grab hold of people who are in a, either in a vulnerable situation or in a in a situation where we're all vulnerable mm. um and how mar how people can be affected that that became a central theme of conquest and um uh, it, it's i i i hope readers will recognize something of that anxiety that infected all of us and and, and how it's it shaped the book for sure yeah it's, i was reading something in new scientist the other day about 
it, whether it was possible to um, to sort of treat, I mean, that's the wrong word, really, to convince people who are convinced by conspiracy theories that they're not real. And it was talked about the difficulty of doing that, how it was how mm. it was very difficult to do that. And the most effective thing was deemed to be some sort of three month course on logical thinking. But you couldn't get somebody who was because you know, they'd say straight away, oh, that's part of the conspiracy. That's part so, of it. Yeah. 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 So, so it's very, very interesting. So um, sort of to, to bring to bring this to a close, as we don't give too much away, um, <laughs> sure. but something that's, you know, you mentioned that um, J.S. Bach is a, is a big thing in the book. And I was fascinated by that because I thought, right, well, because Frank is into coding, we see a lot about coding tying into that. Um, and I was kind of expecting the kind of thing that maybe Simon Ings would have done in The Weight of Numbers. And I, I've never met Simon. He's a great writer. I don't... Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, person. yeah, I'm, I'm sure you, yeah. know, you know his work. Yeah. I imagine you've probably yeah. met him. But, um, but yeah. he's, he's really great, Simon. I must must do something about him on the channel. And But you sort of veered off into music. And, of course, obviously, something that you used to do as a job now, correct me if I'm wrong, you used to be the buyer for a chain of independent music shops. Is that right? Yes. Yes. For a long record. time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That was your job. That's a dream job. That's like that's the only similar job to being a bookseller. And it's uh, very it's very similar. And I, I, yeah. I then afterwards worked at Foils and that there, there's a lot of crossover. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, we, we saw a lot of J.S. Bach and um, it's one of those things where you talked about the different recordings and what have you, the characters in the different versions of the recordings and they all listen to them. And um, are you, are you a J.S. Bach fan? Is, is, is that something that. Oh, uh, completely. I mean, yeah, that's all yeah. drawn completely. Hard to avoid, I mean, isn't it really? You well, I, it, I love it. music is music has been central to my life from, um, you know, a very young age. And it's, yeah. I have wanted to write about it for a very long time. And again, it was only, at this point that I really felt ready to try and do that because I, th I, yeah. I read, I seek out novels with music in them because music is so important to me, mm. but it's quite rare for it to work. It's quite yeah, rare. Yeah, it's a for... very uncommon thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't want to risk trying before I felt ready. And mm. I, I did, I felt that this was a sort of very, very very weird time to feel ready but it did fit and it felt it felt the two the the idea of code and music of course those have often been cross matched and you know music and mathematics are you know commonly um described as being on the same side of that using similar aspects of the brain and the the idea of music and Bach's music in particular being a world changing phenomenon felt particularly apposite for Frank to play with. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, just, yeah. The way he thinks is more classical than romantic, isn't it? And Bach is definitely fed into romanticism, but he's a classical composer in the full sense of the word. And um, just to sort of, I mean, I mean, I'm not big on classical music, but Bach is somebody who I, I have and do listen to. And um, just to veer off the side, we um, there's there's a sort of when Rachel and Frank first meet early in the book, um, she plays him the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders on Mars by David Bowie, yes. which is yeah. obviously a favourite record of many of us. And um, and you know, I I detect a Bowie fan there in you. Is that true? Are you are you a, a I I I think he's a you know an in, in I, I am by no means an expert on Bowie. Yeah. I remember, I mean, like Space Oddity was one of the very, very first singles that me and my brother bought together with our pocket money and you know yeah. did did the major top you know i yeah. i was ground yeah. control he was major yeah. top you know yeah. picture <laughs> that um the you know a life right. certain tracks of bowie will always be with me and sort of yeah. as as i i've grown as a writer his, his significance to music his significance to thinking and ideas yeah, absolutely. like they've yeah. been in, and i just wanted i Bowie is there because I thought that Rachel would be a Bowie fan. It just seemed yeah. very, very yeah, natural it's... that she would be. And it gave me a marvellous reason to revisit the yeah. uh, the albums. And yeah. what a lovely time I had doing that. Yeah, and it's, it, it yeah. seems entirely natural and unforced. And um, it's funny, mm. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. And um, I had a period where I used to say, you know, I'm not a serious fan because, you know, there's people out there who are obsessive and collectors. And mm. I used to say, um, 
in work. I'm not a serious Bowie fan. I've only got 65 CDs. <laughs> and, I them and I had 105. So. <laughs> there you go. Um, but, um, You're in denial, Steve. You're in denial. <laughs> I know. It's terrible thing. But, um, but it's, it's, it's strange. I mean, he he obviously um, was an important modern artist. You know, he said rock and roll is like the most important modern art of the, of yeah. the latter half of the 20th century. In the early part of the 20th century, it's the visual arts, and then it's rock and roll. But that aside, um, a few a few other things. So um, so talk about music books in rock and roll. So you, you must you must read some more Jake, Jake stuff. You must read House of Rumour, and you must read Johnny Come Home. We'll talk about them again sometime when we, when we meet up or when we're Zooming again. But um, the authenticity thing is very difficult. And... Um, I'm always looking out for for music books that can do that, and they're so hard to come by. If you ever see it, there's a great little book by Mick Farron called The Tale of Willie's Rats, which is oh, wow. a super, super rare Granada paperback from the mid-70s. I think it only had one printing. It cost you about 50 quid now, unfortunately. It was free on his website. I don't know if it's still there, I don't know if his website's still there, because obviously he's died, sadly. And it's this wonderful first-person narrative of a guy who hears Elvis on the radio when he's a schoolboy in the 50s the classic sort of background rock and roll story and he goes through the folk boom and he starts his band in the 60s and they're like a combination of the Velvet Underground, the Rolling Stones and um, who else would I say, Velvet Underground, Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and it's got all the traditional narratives, drugs groupies, what, yeah. what have you you know, outrageous stage performances it's a great book, it's one to pick up but anyway, enough about everybody else's books so we're just going to wrap up now and say so 11th of May, Conquest, hardcover from River Run. Very beautiful. Thanks very much, Nina, for talking to me again. And um, I'm going to leave you to go on with your next project. <laughs> and we'll talk again before too long. And we're going to say goodbye for now. Then you guys, I, I can have a chat after after we've sort of waved goodbye to the guys. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Nina. And Thank uh, you, Steve. It's just a fantastic chat. Thanks. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my yeah. friend, and, and mm. to catch up <laughs> and to keep reading your marvellous work. So I've got the thing flashed up saying we're running out of time. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Yeah. I'm going to stop recording um, and we're stopped. Mm.